Sup, sup, sup. My name is Ray for the Eager Council. Good morning. We have a few spoilers from, I believe, one of the next sets that are coming up. I'm not fully sure which set this is. Don't kill me. Um, but these are really cool, interesting looking cards, and we're going to run them off. We have uh, in Infernoid uh, Nethro Moth, which I believe is this guy right here. It looks like a moth. Cannot be normal summoner set. Must be stressed summoned from your hand or graveyard by banishing three of these Infernoid uh, Noid monsters. Total from your hand or graveyard with the combined level and rank of all monsters you control, level E or less. Cannot be special summoned by other ways. When this card is special summon, you can destroy all the cards on field. Oh god, I see where this is going. Uh, once a turn, when a spell or trap or a spell or trap is activated, you contribute one monster you control and negate that activation if you do banish it. That's actually kind of balanced there. So, um, it has pretty much, what, a dark hole effect and can control your opponent's spells. Now, the main thing is, what can you attribute to get a plus off of? And there is quite a few answers for that. So, um, that is one interesting, interesting thing we would have to play around with. And uh, we have Overflowing Purgatory, which I believe is this here, the spell card, the field. Yes, it is, field spell card. During each of your standby phases, you can special somewhat Infernoid token, uh, Fiend type fire, level 1, attack 0, defense 0. To your side of the field, if, the, if you would special summon an Infernoid monster by its own effect, you could banish these instead or as well. Well, just basically as well. All Infernoid monsters you control cannot be targeted by your opponent's attack, Jesus, and cannot be targeted by your opponent's card effects, except for Infernoid monsters with the highest level. That's actually pretty interesting, because this will spill out the tokens, and the tokens can then be attributed for the big one, and then the big one, basically, why it's on the board and you have the field up, the tokens can't be attacked. <coughs> That's kind of silly. And then we have Awakened Purgatory, which I believe is going to, yes, it is, in, in, the Infloroid Monsters. During each of your standby phase, you can send one or two Infloroid Monsters from your deck to the graveyard. If you control non Infloroid Monsters, send to the graveyard. Uh, these guys seem to be sort of like Infernies, in a way. How they send shit to the graveyard, I don't know. Maybe that's just my first analysis on them. Um, and then we have more Intermate Performer uh, Performer um, Performer Pals. That's kind of a funny name. We have the ass and we have the magician. I couldn't resist saying ass. Just, I could not. And uh, this was actually the girl that you want to make um, mention of, because someone just mentioned it there, is actually the contest winner for OCG, where basically they design a card and then they'll actually print it, and that's the one. So let's start with the, let's start with the ass, the donkey. Uh, when this card is almost summoned, you could special summon one level four Pendema Pal monster from your hand to graveyard. Not bad. Pretty much. Hey, look, instant rank four kind of thing. Uh, I'm sorry, instant rank three. Because it is a three, you wouldn't want to do it that way. Unless they get a tuner. If they get a tuner, that would be amazing. Not going to happen ever. Uh, Entimate Trump Witch. Scale four. Pendulum effect. Once returning, can fusion summon one fusion monster from your extra deck using monsters you control as fusion materials. That's actually pretty dope. And you contribute this card at one polymerization from your deck to the... To, uh, from your great or deck or graveyard to your hand. There we go. And let me just say, this is actually pretty fucking good. I'm not even gonna lie. Um, the main reason is is because really heavy fusion based decks that need polymerization to work. This is gonna give them that push that they desperately need. And that's actually you know really good support. I'm not even gonna lie. Slow clap for Konami this once. And then we have more of these infrared monsters, and they look fucking badass. I wish I could say, oh, they are from the Secret of Revolution, okay. So these are from the Secret of Revolution, and I am getting extremely tempted to play these guys just from the artwork alone, but let's read the effects. They're Fire Fiends, which is weird enough, and the first one we're going to be going over is Bezel Bull, and uh, cannot be normal summoner set, must be some sudden from your hand, but banish you one infrared monster from your hand or graveyard, we could just use the tokens for that. Um, while the combined level of and rank of all effect monsters you control is six or less and cannot be special summoned by any other ways. Once returned, you can target one face up card your opponent controls, return it to the hand. Holy shit, Shadow Counter. Uh, once per turn during your opponent's turn, you contribute one monster you control and target one card in your opponent's graveyard and banish it. Wow, that's actually pretty nifty. Not even gonna lie, I like that a lot. And then, oh, that's a level two, I'm sorry, that's a level two over here. And then the other one, which is. Lucifigus, which is the level 3 one, who looks like Frankenstein. 
with that thing on his back. Cannot be normal summoner set. So pretty much these guys are special summon only. Vanny's Vanny's emptiness would just murder this deck. But banishing one infrared monster from your hand or graveyard while you control the uh, all effects you control its air last cannot be such in my other ways. Once per turn, you can target one face up monster, destroy it. Once per turn during your opponent's turn, you contribute one monster you control to target one card in your opponent's graveyard and bash it. That's actually pretty nifty. Continuing onward on our second part, um, we have the Wood Ritual. And it is basically the level 7 Ice Barrier Synchro and cannot be ritual summoned except by the ritual spell card for Nero Cloth and must be ritual summoned by tribute non level 7 monsters and cannot be special summoned by other ways. You can use it, each of this effect once a turn during either player's turn. You can discard this card, then target one Necro monster in your graveyard during this turn. Wait, discard it. Whoa, 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 what? Discard it? <laughs> I'm, I'm just gonna make sure. You can discard this card and target one Necro monster you control. Okay, during this turn, that monster cannot be destroyed by battle or effects. Two, you can discard one Necro Cloth monster and target one card of the field and destroy that card. See, that's what more I was expecting. It's kind of odd that you can basically discard this card, so I guess you have to have a second one to actually do that. It's kind of weird. Um, anyway, on another note, Moving over to the level 3, Nero Cloth No Jitsu. <laughs> I'm going to stop there. You can special, you can, I'm sorry, you can use the second effect of this once per turn. First effect, if you ritual summon exactly one Nero Cloth ritual monster, you can use this card as the entire tribute. Sounds like Yashiki. I like it. If this card is tribute for effect, you can add one warrior type Necro Cloth ritual monster from your deck to your hand. Now, if only that level 7 was a ritual, that would be a lot better. She kind of looks like High Priestess mixed with the Ice Barrier Dragon, which is hilarious. And finally, onto the Ritual Spell card. I'm expecting, before I read this, I'm expecting more of a Kashiki thing where you constantly pull it back. This card can be used Ritual Summon a Nero Cloth. Ritual Monster, you can use the effect of Nero Cloth. Mirror once return. Ritual Summon any number of Nero Cloth Ritual Monsters from your hand. Holy shit! By tripping exactly one monster from your hand or field or sending one monster from your extra deck to the graveyard whose level is equal to the level of the ritual monster you summon or monsters. Holy shit. <laughs> Goddamn, that's pretty stupid. If you could if you control no no monsters, you could bash both this card and one Nero Cloth monster from your graveyard, add one Nero Cloth spell card from your deck to your hand. Holy shit, but just, oh my god, that, that is pretty stupid, not even gonna lie, that's pretty damn dumb, that's um, pretty damn dumb. Here comes four more cards I don't believe we have covered yet, and these are the Secret of Evolution and the Booster Special Pack Tribe Force, because I was calling like this thing that I could not pronounce, um, Tribe Force, that was a Tribe Force, so go figure. But we'll go over that first. When this card is almost done, you can special summon one hermit. So we'll call it a hermit, make it easy. This guy right here is the hermit, the one with the white and the you know the sword and shit. Um, special summon one hermit monster from your deck, except the hermit uh, featured here. The, the hermit yokai. That, something like yukai, something along those lines. During the end phase, if this card was special summoned during this turn, return to the hand. So Divine Valley of the Mist Wind seems legit enough. Um, this one is the pillar card. It's the left pillar, and it's a pendulum monster. Oh god. <laughs> uh, wind level 4, pendulum scale 3, pendulum if a hermit yokai monster you control would be destroyed with a battle card effect, you could destroy this card instead. It's monster fact reads if this card is normal summon, change this card defense position, your opponent cannot target hermit yokai monsters you control with, battle, uh, with card effects except this card. It's staffed to 2100 defense, that's pretty bulky. Um, not super bulky, but pretty bulky. And here comes the right pillar. I'm guessing that these two are supposed to be coming in arc together, and it's Japanese thing. Um, it's, yeah, okay. Pendulum scale 5, once per turn you control a hermit yokai monster, either other pendulum zone. You can make this card pendulum scale 11. Holy shit! Until the end of this turn, if you activate this effect, you cannot switch some monsters other than hermit yokai monsters for the rest of the turn. If this card is normal summon, change this card defense position. 
And its secondary effect is your opponent cannot target her monsters you control for an attack except this card. So one for attacks, one for effects, and that's pretty stupid. And I think we didn't get one for the fourth one? Okay, we didn't get one for the fourth one. Moving on. Um, oh, look at that. We have tons of shit today. And their OCG list came out. We're going to give analysis of that. Um, not too, too much, but that will be after this video. So we have the Noble Spirit Beast Kan uh, Kanahawk. I believe that's this one. Should be. You can special summon one Noble Spirit Beast per turn. Once per turn, you can banish one Spirit, mod uh, spirit card from your deck. And then during your second standby phase after activation, add that banish card to your hand. That's actually pretty nifty. It's like a gold star. I like that a lot. And then the one next to it is the Noble, Spe Noble Spirit Beast Ram... Ah, uh, God, I'm butchering names today. Rampetta. You ought to excuse my butchering of names because, well, you just have to. You can special summon one noble knight, uh, one noble, I was gonna say noble knight, one noble spirit beast ramp, uh, rampator per turn. Once per turn, you can banish one spirit beast monster from your deck, and if you do, send one spirit beast monster with the same type as the banished monster from your deck to the graveyard. Okay, so it's gotta have a way to summon love here to get the banished cards back or something along those lines. Whoa, okay, tour guy. <laughs> um, I know there was, I think there was like one or two things more. Just, yep, there is. Okay. This is the last thing we have to cover and the one thing I really wanted to save for a separate video. So I won't do that, unfortunately, as much as I want to. Here comes the new Manga BLs that comes in the 5Ds Manga Edition Volume 8, which is coming out of OCG Land on the 3rd of October. So, the reason why we should care about this card is 4,000 attack and it's level fucking 8. The reason, no, I'm sorry, it's level 10, that's even better. Level 10, 4,000 attack, 4,000 defense. When I first read it, it was like 7 in the morning, my eyes were bulging out of my head. One dark tuner or two or, and plus two or more non-tuner monsters. For those of you who are wondering how the hell you would summon this, oh, it's pretty damn easy. Plague Spreader plus the, both Chaos Minis or two level 4s, it's pretty stupid. Cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects. Other monsters you control cannot attack. Kind of balances it. And once per turn, you can target one monster your opponent controls, make that monster's attack zero. And if you do, you gain life points equal to that monster's original attack. Also, any battle damage this card inflicts to your opponent during that turn that you activate the effect, it's halved. I really like this card so damn much. Now I'm probably going to play the fuck out of it in Chaos Dragons because Light Pulsar just got a brand new friend yet again. That goes, holy shit, it's on the board, it's scary, it dropped Dredgement Dragon down zero, you gain 3,000 light points, and you inflict 1,500. I think that's pretty damn beast. It is semi-balanced because other monsters can't attack, but we've seen that a lot with the Manga Dragons happening now. I'm actually okay with that because the trade-off is this 4,000 beast monster that just comes out of nowhere and just shits all over everything and then... You could just hold back everything else. You don't have to go all the way in. Um, cannot be destroyed by battle of card effects. Means that you can use it with Scrap Dragon again. And do the whole BL thing that you do now. I'm not saying to throw your BLs out. These work best together. Because if one gets taken down. Oh they took down with 101. You bring out this one. And then you affect battle of the Castell. Or breakthrough skill of the Castell. It's just wonderful. Anyway I will see you on the next video. Which will be in a short little while. About the OCG ban list. For those of you who care. Anyway, I'm Reef for the Yu-Gi-Oh! Council. I'll see you in the next video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to hit it with a like button. Subscribe for more if you have, if you're new to the channel, if you haven't, if you already have, sorry, bother you about that crap. And uh, let me know down in the comments what you think about this. I will see you in the next video. Peace.